Okay, so I'm just going to be doing the full run through. I know a lot of people love to see the full run through with no breaks just so they can follow along. So that is exactly what we're going to be doing. No breaks. But at the end of the video, I'm going to be talking through the talents that I have, the specific builds that you can use that are Mara specific or a holistic build. And I'm also going to be focusing on a winter's chill build that you can actually use for raiding and things like that. I'm also going to be going through some tips and tricks. But during the actual you know, run through, I'm just going to be focusing on exactly what is going on. And so what we're doing here is typically we take a right to go over to the boars and we start going and skipping all these hydras. Hydras are a major pain because they have something called thrash. Thrash basically charges up their attacks and then if they hit you, they hit you with all those attacks at once. And so what happens is that you just get obliterated. Like I'm talking five hits at once and they can actually hit you for you know about 2,500 health. And I have 2,900 health right now. So that would be a ton of damage for me to sustain and so it sucks. But we're going to come over through the left. We're going to be going up towards Princess. So I've been taking a break from the Princess farm to be able to make this video. But I am at over 300 kills of Princess trying to get the dagger for some extra farm. So I'm really excited to make some videos with that dagger once I get it. You have a couple different ways to skip this Dimetrion pack. You can run along this left side and just jump along the wall like this. And you'll be able to skip them. Or you can just blink through them and just run around the side. But the rest you can pretty much just skip just by running around the side. I'm not picking up herbs as I go through just because I'm trying to focus on making the video as you know succinct as possible and I should really start a timer so let's add about one minute to this timer but I am going through and just focusing on the run itself just so that I can have that be something you guys can watch and follow along so we're going to come down here and now the beautiful part of this run is that the mobs are level 46 to 48 which means that you can be a lot higher of a level and get a lot more XP from these mobs because they aren't actually green to you, the 48 ones particularly, until you're 51, or the average group level is 51, which actually means that you could stay here for quite some time and get some really good experience if you include this in your pool. Okay, so we're going to start off with the rank 1 Frostbolt on both of these packs right here just to get them pooling. Now, I do have improved Frostbolt, and so that's going to be part of the spec that is Mara specific, and it's beautiful, but I'll be going to that in the end. We're going to rank one frostbolt this group and we're just going to start pulling them all you want to pull every single group in this area all the way through until you cross over and what i mean by cross over is cross over the waterfall but we're pulling every single group and what you're going to notice is that i'm trying to pull them so that they're all going to be kind of stacked together because at the end of the day you always want the mobs to be as stacked as possible i pull this last group with a rank one fire blast blink and then i go for a blizzard you're going to notice that the mobs are coming up here mobs are coming from the left and by rank one blizzarding throughout this run, what we're actually trying to do is just try to keep the mobs stacked and it actually keeps them pretty stacked so that one, we're not taking unnecessary damage, but two, you're also not having them reset. Most of these mobs have a proximity reset. And so if they get too far away from you, they're going to reset. But by blizzarding, you can actually keep them close to each other and have them not reset. A lot of them also have a mob specific reset, which means that if there's like mobs to them or there's mobs near them, they're going to keep on going after you. Whereas if there's mobs that you lose, they might turn around. Now these Demetrions have a very interesting kind of mechanic where they actually don't pull if you don't specifically hit them. So you see all those mobs run right by those Demetrions and they don't actually pull. So what you have to do is you either have to pull them with your Blizzard or pull them with a Counterspell or a Nova or specifically target them. You have to do something to basically pull them. Come around the side, try to avoid the Hydras. And so you can avoid the hydras by blinking. You can avoid the hydras just by running around. But these mobs will actually pull the hydras if they get too close. So you want to make sure that the mobs also don't pull the hydras. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to guide the hydra or guide the mobs around to the right and try to not pull this hydra. But at the end of the day, spoiler alert, you have to pull the hydra. There's no if ands or buts about this hydra right here. You're going to pull it. There's no way to get around it, unfortunately. But occasionally he will reset, and there's specific ways to cause him to reset. But you're going to lose some mobs if you cause them to reset. So it's kind of like a give and take with whether or not you're going to do that. But here you see that the mobs are here. I'm going to try not to use any engineering because some people aren't going to have engineering when they're doing this farm. And so I don't want to be, make a farm where, you know, it shows engineering and then some people are like, oh, well, I don't have engineering. So I want to do it without engineering. But if you have engineering, a great thing to do right there to kind of stack them is just throw an iron grenade. Throw an iron grenade and then blizzard on top of it. What that's going to do is it's going to slow down the very front mobs with the iron grenade. And then the back mobs are going to go ahead and catch up a little bit while you're getting that first blizzard tick. But you're going to run up this path. You actually skip this pack down here and these two packs up here. Reason being, the hydras run incredibly fast. And if you go pull those packs, you're actually going to have them catch up to you. And they're going to hit you and do a lot of damage. 
Your goal is just to get through here as quick as possible and to make sure that the hydras are slowed. I'm also running mage armor, which I really messed up on that. So make sure you're not running mage armor <laughs> to start the run because you're not going to be able to slow these mobs if they hit you and you're going to be taking more damage. So I'm going to use a preemptive pot here just to make sure that I'm staying up, you know, high on my mana and everything like that. I'm going to use jump turn cone of colds to kind of keep them off of me, but you're just going through your normal strat here, just kind of kiting them around. We don't pull those borers, but at the end of the day, that's not going to be, that's like three packs you're missing out on, but you pulled more boars just with the first pool, and then you also pull Demetrions and everything like that. The boars also aren't elites, so they're not giving you as much experience. But by doing this, we are going to have a lot more mobs. So what I like to do here at the end is I like to blink ahead and then go into rank one blizzard. Now, all these mobs are going to slow when you get into the water, just like the boars, except for the Hydra. So you want to make sure you get that blizz tick off on the Hydra and then go into the water. You see how everybody stops except for the Hydra? That's just a mechanic of the Hydra, but they're probably going to run ahead of the group. Your goal is to stay far ahead of the Hydras, because like I said before, if they catch up to you with Thrash, they're just going to kill you. Now, obviously, this isn't built for gnomes. You can use Elixir of Giant Growth or uh, Winterfall Firewater if you want to, but to get through the water. But I'm going to be coming around here, and I'm going to rank one Frostbolt this Shambler right here. I'm going to go ahead and Frost Nova these mobs right here and blink ahead. You can see all the mobs are kind of, you know, grouped up pretty tightly. That's one huge benefit of using the blizzard back there before we get into the water is that all the mobs are going to be grouped at all times. You want these mobs to be grouped as much as you can. We're going to rank one Kona cold that group on the right left. We're going to arc an explosion that mob on the right and counter spell that mob in the corner to make sure that we pull every single one of those mobs. We're going to come up here. We're going to face pull these noxious slimes jump Nova to get that shambler and those slimes. Make sure that you're keeping up ice bear at all times. This is actually two packs of slimes on the left here. And so if you just arcane explosion, sometimes you're only going to get the front pack. So I are, or so I fire blast the backpack and then arcane explosion in the front. Some people say that if you pull the uh, creeping sludges, you have a better chance of keeping slimes. So I recommend just arcane explosion them when you're not next to them. If you do pull them while they're next to you, they're actually, they do some serious damage. And so you actually could potentially take a good amount of damage. So I definitely recommend waiting until you're a little bit ahead of them to make sure that you pull the sludges. Now we're going to come around the side here, run along the back, pulling all these mobs. You should have your blink up very soon here. It's just blink right as soon as it's up, making sure that you're keeping up your barrier at all times. Rank one frostbolt this mob here in the corner. He'll go and aggro the rest. And then arcane explosion, this stomper, jump off. And now you're going to notice this is very similar to the other pool. However, there are some different things that we're going to be doing because of the hydras and making sure that we optimize our run as much as possible. First, we're going to be trying to use Blink as little as possible. Blink actually is a big reset. We're going to go ahead and rank one Frostbolt this mob, but then immediately turn around and run. Those mobs are coming down the path. You want to make sure that you let them get far, but not too far. Because if they get too far, they're actually going to catch up to you when you're coming out of this room and just one shot you. But by rank one Frostbolting that mob on the bottom, he's going to pull some extra mobs, but get to them slower because of Frostbolt. And it also gives us time to get into this room and pull those mobs. We're going to come out of this room and either rank one Kona Cold or Arcan Explosion to pull that mob. And we're going to be running along the right. What you're going to notice is that all the mobs are kind of coming, coming to us here. And they're trying to catch up to us in this corner. And this is, you know, a roundabout strat. And so Vendy Frost initially introduced this roundabout strat back in his video. So shout out to Vendy Frost. But basically, you come around the side and you have them all grouped. And now what you notice is that when you hop off here, they're actually already grouped and you don't need to blizzard on this route. Look how tightly grouped they are already. And there's some mobs in the back, but most of them are satyrs, which are going to catch up anyways. But there's one important note. Once you jump off there, you do not want to blink through this walkway. Reason being is if you blink, you're going to have mobs reset. Now, if you're having a lot of troubles with the hydras, this actually could be beneficial to you. Because if you blink, the hydras will likely reset. So if you want the hydras to blink, or if you want the hydras to reset, go ahead and blink. But you're also going to lose slimes. You're going to lose borers and things like that. Once you get to this point, you can blink over here because you're actually not changing your distance from the mobs. But it's more so when you're back in that area, if you blink, you're going ahead of the mobs by a lot more, and then you potentially could lose aggro on them. Now you go back into your normal blizzard strat to pull all these mobs. We're going to counterspell this mob here in the corner. We're going to run around the side. Make sure that you have Dampen Magic up. I'm actually going to reapply it just to make sure that I'm not losing Dampen Magic. Leave these corruptors up. So this is something I really started doing near the end of my farms, especially when I had hydras, because I started to notice that the corruptors are a nice, oh crap kind of mana resource. So let's say that you're going through your run and 
you realize that you killed all these little sprites in the back and you have no way to get back mana. Well, what you then do is you pull those corruptors when you run back around and they can just top you off on all your mana and you're good to go. So save them for the second run through because they can be a really good mana resource. You're gonna come down here and you're gonna run to the left again like normal. There's a slight change when we're down on the bottom that I'll be talking through in just a second. But make sure that you keep up your shields. I'm actually going to use a small healing potion here just to make sure that I stay up at full health. Rank one Frostbolt, that mob in the corner. Rank one Arcane Explosion, these two mobs right here. Counterspell this mob right here. And now, originally, what I did right here was blinked around the corner and Novid. Don't. So there was actually a person in my stream who went ahead and gave me a nice tip, which is run automatically or run manually and then blink once you Nova. Now, the reason being is that these mobs from the right are going to hit you while you're doing that, which is going to apply ice armor and apply the slow to them. This allows you to get around the side before the other mobs will get caught up to you. So all the mobs from the back are coming through and it actually causes all the mobs to stack up really, really well at the very end. And so when you go to do your rank one blizzard, you have the mobs coming from one tunnel, you have the mobs coming from the other tunnel, and they converge almost perfectly right on your blizzard, allowing you to get the optimal blizzard strategy with them. Now this is pretty standard. You can see the Hydra in the back. You can see that we still have a slime. I'll try to target that slime if I can. But don't worry about it too much. I do have this Tangler here. If there's any stragglers, if these mobs on the right didn't pull, if there's like a stealth mob, just Nova it. It's perfectly fine. Jump off here. And now a nice little tip here. You can actually run up this route. So what you do is you jump up on this route and you jump up on here. And now you're up on this ledge much earlier than if you had to run all the way around. Always rank one blizzard on a corner, as I said multiple times because the mobs then have to run down the ramp and then into your blizzard again. So by blizzarding on the corner, you're actually hitting them with blizzard twice, causing them all to make sure that they get slowed. Sometimes there's a bug where if mobs are running too fast, they're going to be able to get through your blizzard without getting slowed. But there's some preventative measures that we can take, and there's one big preventative measure at the end that I'll show you in just a second. Now you're going to see that I have some corruptions and some dots on myself. I want to make sure that I let those dots expire before I go for a bandage at the end here. Otherwise, it's potentially going to interrupt my bandage, and that could be bad. So I'm going to jump off the wall here. They're all going to start running back. I'm going to watch for my debuffs to fall. I'm going to swap to Mage Armor here to make sure that I have maximum resistances. And then I'm going to go ahead and bandage and get up to full health. Health is number one key. But then we're going to go into Blizzards. Now, this is just rank one Blizzard, but your focus is to make sure that the front mob is always slowed. And so my rule of thumb when I'm going through a Blizzard is to put the Blizzard with the front mob being at the center of the Blizzard. Go ahead and counterspell that mob in the corner, and we've now pulled every single mob. So we have both the orange side with all the hydras and everything like that. We skipped about three boar packs, didn't pull those. But outside of that, we have pretty much every single mob. Don't worry about Entangle Roots or him being ahead because he will cast Entangle Roots grouping up with the rest of the mobs. But you can see here that we still have the slimes. We still have the slimes because we haven't blinked. But we still have the hydra as well. So if you want to get rid of the hydra, you're going to get rid of the slimes. But you can blink down on the bottom here and lose them both. I'm going to keep them, though, for the point of the video because we want to kill as many mobs as possible. And let's turn on Kill Track to make sure just how many mobs it is. Jump off the side, we're gonna be using that roundabout strat and you can see just how tightly grouped all these mobs are. Like you can't even get them closer with the blizzard. So this is a better strat than using the blizzard on the route. And by not blinking when you're running through this side right here, you're gonna keep all those mobs too at the end. But again, you can blizzard, or sorry, you can blink across this overpath here on the top because that's gonna allow you to have, you know, the mobs not hit you from below, which would kind of suck. So make sure that you do do that. But now we're going to come across here. We have plenty of time to get in position. This is one huge tip that I have for a lot of people pre-blizz. So a lot of people are having trouble where they're blizzarding too late and the mobs are actually running right through their blizzard. You actually want to hit your blizzard one second before the mobs would get to the corner. What that does is blizzard actually doesn't tick for the first second. And so this makes sure that the blizzard does tick before the mobs start getting there. And now you can see that they all are perfectly slowed. You do two blizzards to make sure that they're all slowed. And then you do that half blizzard trick. And so you can see that I'm placing my blizzard right with the front mob being directly in the center. Once all those mobs are stacked well in the middle, I'm gonna jump onto this far platform. Now, normally before I was jumping on this closer one, but the reason why I jump on the far one is that the hydras actually go ahead and hit you if you're not on this far one. Now this hydra is being a major pain right here. And so I'm gonna to try to get a rank one blizzard off of him right here. Oh, and I fell. Okay, so if you do fall, which was very bad of me, you can actually get through the bottom here and you're going to be perfectly fine. Just keep on running. I'm not sure how I fell. That literally never happens. It's probably because I'm trying to explain everything while doing the run, but that's okay. Keep on running through. There are going to be some mobs that are 
lower health, so they're going to be stragglers at the end, but we'll deal with those in a second. What I was trying to show you, though, is that you want to jump on the far totem. If you jump on the close totem, what's going to end up happening is that the Hydra is actually going to keep on running towards you, which means he's eventually going to hit you, which is not good because you don't want him to hit you. But there's an easy way to reset the mobs if something goes wrong or if you need to reset, and that's just by jumping down below. I accidentally fell down below, but same thing. We're just going through the reset, and that's to run right along this platform. Now, at this point, you can blink because all these mobs are close enough to you, and they're running back to you and everything like that. So you can blink there, and you're going to be perfectly fine. Some of the mobs are going to be right here when you come around this corner, typically. Right here, you can see this poison sprites. Because at the end of the day, they weren't very low health, right? And so since they weren't low enough, or sorry, sorry, since they were too low, they actually run slower than the rest of the mobs. But your goal is to book it up here. And if you have a swiftness potion, this would actually be really kind of like clutch to have, just to be able to pop a swiftness potion. But we're going to blink along the side here. We're immediately going to the blizzard on the side and try to get them slowed immediately to group up. Now, you want to make sure, again, that you're keeping these front mobs slowed because at this point, you need to keep all of them off you so that they can all get back into position. Don't worry about your mana too much. Use rank one blizzard if you need to. If a mob gets up to you, that's perfectly fine. But when you can, jump onto this platform. We're going to have this Demetrion right here come over and hit us, but that's perfectly fine. We're just going to get this rank one blizzard up on these mobs, and we're going to make sure that all of them are slowed. Once they're all slowed and we feel pretty good about it, we're going to jump up here. And we're going to go back into blizzarding. Now, this Hydra is the pain. He is the biggest bane of our existence. Reason being, in order to reset him, we need to jump on this far platform, which is what's causing all these mobs to be ahead. But although this is very sloppy, this is how we can handle this. And we accidentally slow the Hydra, where we're just focusing on slowing all these mobs down right here. And as soon as the Hydra gets slowed, that's all I need to see. And I'm actually going to jump right back up. Now we jump right back up. We go right back into Blizzard on the corner. I'm not even worrying about this Tangler, to be honest. I can let him hit me a couple times. Because as long as we're keeping this Hydra slowed, he's the only concern. If you need to, you can Nova these Tanglers, but now we have them all in a good position. We jump off and then we just go back into Blizzard and here we are, we are set. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna review this and talk through this cleanly and I'll probably just even record another clean version so I can show you what it's supposed to look like with the Hydras because that was a very scrap kill. But fortunately, you can kind of see that even if it is scrapped, you're still able to get it down. Here I fell down, but what I'm just going to do is they're pretty low health already, and I'm just going to end up uh, blizzarding them here just to get them slowed. I'm going to run in the corner, and I'm just going to you know kill them in the side because you're still able to do that. This is another resource that you can use this little hallway. It helps a lot if you have an LIP, but even without an LIP, you could just keep on kiting them like this and be able to kill them you know, along the side if you need to do that as well, just if you can't get back up. Because you actually have a ton of room to run through down this like normal hallway, and you can actually get off a ton of blizzards while keeping them slowed, especially if they're already low. If you did not know, mobs run slower when they are already low health. And so since these mobs are already low health, they're actually running slower to catch up to us. And you can see this guy running really slow. And so we're able to keep them kited. But this allows us to take out these mobs. And now we have all the mobs dead. That was 210, even with a very sloppy kill. It'd probably be about, you know, I think we're just getting about 223 to 230 during the normal kills. So you can see just how many mobs that we're able to kill with a sloppy pool. And so maybe I'll show you a clean kill at the end here in just a second, just to show you that. Okay, so now we're finally done looting 210 mobs. We ended up getting about 36 gold worth of value. We did get one blue here, the silencer, which is actually a 39 twink item. And so that's pretty good. The overall run took us about 20 minutes, including loot. When you're doing it with running people through, you're actually not going to be, you know, looting as much. And so it's actually be a little bit faster. And when we were doing the power leveling challenge, I actually found that I got about 15 minute resets. And so this is actually four runs per hour still. As far as the XP goes, it's going to be variable, but it could be anywhere between 25 and 30,000 XP per run. So this is a fantastic, fantastic method if you can get it down and do it safely. But let's show you again, you know, another pool to show you exactly how it normally handle the Hydras and normally not have them get all messed up like they did right there. Okay, so here we are again. We are nearing the end. We actually have two Hydras this time, and so it's going to be very interesting. But uh, the important thing is just that you make sure that they're slowed. As long as you're making sure that they're slowed, you're going to be perfectly fine regardless if you have two or potentially even three. Try to not have too many. Honestly, uh, the Hydras are not worth trying to get the extra kills on, but at the end of the day, you're going to be all right. So we're doing the roundabout strat just as we talked about before. We're going to come off this ledge. All the mobs are going to be pretty much perfectly stacked at this point, so we're just going to be going to the corner. You can see that we still have some slimes. I can't really target any of them, but we also have the hydras, so we're going to try to keep the hydras just so that we can make sure that we show exactly how to do it with the hydras. 
We're going to come over the side here, and we're not going to blink. Again, you do not want to blink because if you blink, that's how you're going to reset the hydras, but that's also going to how you're going to reset the slimes. And you want to keep as many of these mobs as possible because you want to be getting your group the maximum XP. We killed two critters along the way. This is just the exact run after the first run that we just did when recording. And so we killed two critters, but outside of that, 212 mobs killed so far between the first run and the two critters, and we are now ready to kill. As I said before, you want to preemptively blizzard. Blizzard actually doesn't start ticking until one second after the blizzard. And so right now we get those first ticks off. Look how slowed they are right when they come to the corner. By doing that pre-blizz, look how stacked they are right on the corner. That will make all the world of a difference and fix so many people's problems. Immediately run to the left. The reason that we run to the left is that we want to make sure that these sprites start going up the ramp so that they stop hitting us as much. Now you just keep on making sure that your blizzard, the very front mob, is right in the center of your blizzard, and that's where you want to be keeping them. Don't worry if there's a couple mobs on you at the end of the day. They're not going to be hitting you too much. Once the mobs get up to the top, you jump onto this far platform. The reason you go for the far one is that if you do not, the hydras are going to still come up this side and they're actually just going to beat you if you're on that closer one. So you want to make sure that you go for the far one. Now we do have this trickster running down here. I'm going to turn my back to him to make sure that he doesn't get to hit us. But then we're going to jump right back up and go right back into blizzard, keeping the front mob slowed. And they're actually almost dead, which is actually pretty wild. And so a lot of these mobs are already dead, but we're just going to make sure that we get the back mobs slowed, jump off the side here again, and then go right back into blizzard rotation. And this, this is pretty much how it looks like when it's clean. And I mean, it doesn't get any easier than this. You just keep on blizzarding them down. The important things are to make sure that one, you jump onto here, and that two, you make sure that you keep track of the hydras. The hydras are the only mobs that are really going to mess with you too much. The rest of the mobs, sure, they can get to you and do some damage, but they're not going to be killing you. The hydras, on the other hand, if they catch up to you, are going to kill you. So make sure that you keep them slowed at all times. But if you keep them slowed, you're going to be perfectly fine running through here. Now, what I want to show you also is you can see that we are really low on mana. And so the only way to get back mana would be to use a pot or something like that, typically. But what you can do is that you can just pull these corruptors right here, go ahead and loop back around the side, jump off, and these corruptors will actually start giving your mana. So I'm just going to rank one blizzard here just to get in range of the corruptors so that they can start hitting me. And this is pretty much how you can handle if you know you need to use the corruptors at the end. I wouldn't recommend jumping off too early, honestly, because you just might take too much damage. But as long as you wait until the end, you can let the corruptors get close enough where you can basically use them as a mana resource. If some shardlings do get through, that's fine. Go ahead and slow them and then keep on going into your normal rotation. The corruptors do not want to cast on me for some reason, so this is a very bad example. But typically they would be casting, so you'd be getting back a ton of mana. I'm going to kite these mobs around just a little bit. I don't have, I have mage armor on, as you guys remember, which means that I'm not going to be able to uh, slow them. But here you can see they started casting poison bolts. I'm just going to evocate just to get down the kill. But it's a good way that you can make sure that you take care of the mobs if, in fact, you are having mana issues. So now we're just going to go ahead and use arcane explosion just to get down the rest of the mobs real quick and be able to go into the looting. But that is how you can do a pretty clean kill and not need to worry about that too much. As you can see, we killed 223 mobs exactly. Okay, so we finished looting and everything like that. And so now you can see that from two runs, we got roughly 62 gold versus of, worth of items. And so honestly, with all the looting in the bag space, even with optimal bag space, which I certainly don't have, you could probably get about three runs in an hour. And so just from pure loot alone, you're going to be looking at about 90 gold an hour. Now, if you're selling the runs, obviously you can get a ton more gold and these runs, you know, definitely will go for 10 to 12 gold a run because the amount of experience is about 25 to 30 K an hour. And you could probably do if you're doing, if you're letting other people loot four runs an hour. So you're going to be making a ton of gold, but I wanted to show you guys the hydro pool. Now let's talk a little bit about the talents themselves. And so with the talents, I went for a Mara specific pool. Now this pool will work for some PVE for frost. It's not going to be an optimum PVE for frost spec, but I am going to have that link down below. So I'm going to have a bunch of specs linked down below. Definitely check out the description if you guys want to see those. But this is Mara specific. This is if you're just soloing Mara, if you're selling runs for Mara and you just want to do Mara, this is your spec guys. And so what you can do is you go into arcane, you go to our standard build, you're going to get five into absorption, you're going to get four into clear casting, you're going to get three into arcane meditation. This is actually going to help you with your mana regen as you're running through and actually plays a pretty vital role when you're going through just to maintain mana. I just could see like my gear is not great guys. I have some epics. I also have some greens. I have nature resist items. My wand is green. My back's green. I have blues. 
things like that. I don't have amazing gear and I'm actually not in my top intellect gear either. Now that I realize it, I'm actually in spell power gear. So I messed up my gear a little bit further on. You could do it in a lot of different gear. Your goal is just to optimize as much intellect and stamina as possible. But this is the arcane side. And then we're going to go over to frost and big change is that we're skipping ice shards. We're skipping chatter. We're only doing blizzard. We did a Kono cold at the end there of the clean run just to finish off some mobs. Outside of that, we're using nothing that would apply to shatter nothing that would apply to ice shatter our shards because blizzard is going to be our number one way that we're going to be killing these mobs so we don't need to worry about them now if we are in a pve spec you definitely want to get ice shards obviously because you're going to be critting like that's the whole entire point of winner's chill is to get crits and so you do want to have ice shards but we can work our way and our spec around to make sure that we're getting that as well with the pve spec so definitely check out that spec down linked below but outside of that we actually get five out of five improved frostbolt now this is nice as we saw when we're pulling the mobs and so this allows us to pull the mobs quicker and so we can get to the end point quicker as well and then we throw two basically like throwaway points in a improved cone of cold because we just needed to be able to get down to ice barrier because you do need ice barrier for this pool you could try to go for you know palm and arcane mind and skip the ice barrier but at the end of the day you definitely want to have ice barrier because you'd be taking too much damage that even if you were using mana shield with you know arcane mind and improved mana shield and everything like that it would not be worth it to skip ice barrier definitely make sure you go get ice barrier but this is kind of the optimal spec that you could use now what makes this farm so lucrative pulling the extra hydras well as we said before they have an improved loot table so loot table is really nice but also there's specific mobs that you're killing there's rock elementals. They're dropping solid stones, which right now a stack of solid stones on my server is going for roughly about three gold, 50 silver. So you get a stack of solid stones. That's a good amount of money right now. They're also dropping elemental earths. Elemental earths right now on my server are going for about three gold and 30 silver. And so that's a lot of gold right there. And you're also getting some herbs along the way. So if you're herbing, there's blind weed along the way. There's ghost mushroom along the way. There's certain herbs that you can pick up and there's probably, probably a ghost mushroom up here. If I was to turn on my find herbs. Yeah, there's ghost mushroom right over there. There's tons of herbs that you can get along the way as well. Doing this pool. That's actually going to net you probably an extra like two to three gold to run. So you're going to be getting a lot of gold. Honestly, if you're soloing this, this is probably about a hundred gold an hour, I would say without boosting. So this is actually really lucrative to do with, with this strategy with the extra elemental earths, the extra chance for epics, the extra like mage weave cloth and the improved loot tables, the solid stones and things like that. You're actually getting some serious gold from this farm. All right, everyone, that wraps up today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, please subscribe and leave a like and a comment below to let me know so. And if you guys have any other ideas for any other videos, please let me know in the comments below. Also check out the description for the Twitch where I do all this live and also for my Twitter and Discord where you guys can be notified of any future updates and when I'm going to go live on stream. So I'll see you guys in the next video.